Okay, here's the final set of questions then for May 2018, times on one higher level, paper one in chemistry. Question 31, what does not affect the mass of products formed in electrolysis in aqueous solution? Current, well, the greater the current, the, the greater the mass of products that will be formed. Uh, so not that one. Duration of electrolysis, well, the longer you leave it, again, the greater the mass of products you'd get formed. Uh, so not that one. The initial mass of the cathode, I mean, could argue something about surface area, but I'm not really thinking that one at the moment. And then the charge on the ions, well, again, uh, the greater the charge on the ions, the greater the electrical conductivity of the solution, I would have thought. So I suspect that would have an impact. Plus, of course, then that would affect the number of electrons they have to have related to the current. So, for example, something with a 2 plus charge would need 2 electrons, whereas something with a 1 plus charge would need uh, half the number of electrons in order to sort of form atoms. So uh, I don't agree with that one. So I'm um, liking that one because uh, I think yeah, it will definitely affect it. 32. What is the product of the reaction between hex free ene and steam? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's hexane. That'll be hex free ene. If we add steam to it, we can add H2O, OH to one of them, H to the other. You can see it doesn't really make any difference because the symmetry where the OH goes there or there, it would be the same product. We basically get uh, this, and then it'll be position one, two, and three. So that would be hexan three O, okay? hexan three O. The double bond would have to be there to give hexan two O, which could then still give hexan three O. Uh, but yeah, this one, the symmetry is just the one possible product. Which monomer could create this polymer? Uh, again, if we look at sort of where the kind of uh, the monomer kind of fits in, so there's the monomer there because we're just looking for the H. Remember. So that would be basically this stuff. So that's four carbons long, one, two, three, four. So that's butene and it's position one, two, three, and four. So that would be but chewing, okay? Because but one would be the end of the chain there. So but chewing. 34, which is a secondary alcohol? Well, this one is a primary alcohol because the carbon carrying the OH group has got two hydrogens attached to it, just one carbon attached, just one carbon attached, and it's a primary one. Here, the carbon carrying the OH has got two carbons attached, so that's secondary, so that's looking like the one. Rule out the others, this carbon's just got the one carbon attached, that one's primary, and then this one's got one, two, three carbons attached, this one is a tertiary alcohol, so it's going to be B. What is the name of this compound applying IUPAC rules? Okay, so first of all, we start the numbering. That's going to be position one, two, three, and four. And then uh, what about E versus Z? So look at the priority groups. Bromine's got a higher atomic number than chlorine. So this is priority one, this is priority two. And then carbon's got a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So this is priority one, this is priority two. So the highest priority groups are on the same side of the double bond, so it's going to be Z. Okay, so it's going to be the Z one. And then looking at it, okay, this one looks good. We've got one bromo, one chloro, but one in. So it's going to be B. Which molecule contains a chiral carbon? We'll draw these out. So that's this one, one, two, three, four, five. And then the bromine there. Well, it's got the symmetry here, so that's not chiral because it's got two ethyl groups. What about this one? one two three four and then the bromine on there well, that looks pretty good that looks like a chiral center there because you've got a methyl and ethyl a hydrogen and a bromine so that's looking good just eliminate the other two what about this one what have we got going on here so that's that's a strange structure um, okay so go bromine to the ch2 and then to the ch and then the CH3 and then the CH2Br. Cool. So, uh, yeah, perfect symmetry across there. So that's not a chiral center because you've got the CH2Br, CH2Br. Cool, that's a hard one. And then, yeah, this one clearly doesn't have it. That's just, what is it, five carbons? One, two, three, four, five. And then the bromine. Uh, so, yeah, no chiral centers at all in there. So we're going to go with B. Uh, 37, which reagents are needed to convert nitrobenzene to phenylamine in two steps? Well, the first step, of course, will be to reduce the nitro group, and that would require tin and conch HCl. And then that would give us uh, the uh, amine salt. So to free it up and deprotonate, they would need to add sodium hydroxide to give us the free amine. 
and then we could distill that out then whereas as the salt it would have a much higher boiling point and melting point but if we free it up to the free amine by adding a strong uh, base to deprotonate the ammonium salt then uh, we get the free amine so that's going to be d what is the ihd index of hydrogen deficiency of free methyl cyclohexane well we've got a ring so that's one and then we've got a double bond that's one as well so one plus one that's going to be two what is the ratio of the areas of the signals in the proton NMR spectrum of pentan friol? We sketch that out one, two, three, four, five, and then the OH here. And then, of course, you've got the hydrogen there. You've got two hydrogens here and here. Three hydrogens here and here. Now, there's a nice big plane of symmetry through that molecule. So, basically, these are in the same environment because of the symmetry. So, that's going to be six. Uh, these are in the same environment again because of the symmetry there's four of them so that's going to be four and then we've got this one and this one so six to four to one to one so we're looking at a so because of the symmetry uh, we've got some hydrogens in the same chemical environment and then number 40 which would be the most effective method to distinguish between liquid propan 1 ol and propan 2 ol observation of a color change when warmed with acidified potassium dichromate well that would turn from orange to green the green would be the cr3 plus but that's going to happen in both of them because this would oxidize to an aldehyde and then a carboxylic acid whereas this can still also oxidize it would oxidize to a ketone so that's no good because they both oxidize determination of the mz value of molecular ion in the mass spec well they're structural isomers of each other it would be the same number so that's not helpful Determination of percentage composition, well again, they're structural isomers, so knowing their molecular formula uh, and their percentage by mass of the elements isn't going to help. So it's going to be proton NMR spectroscopy, that's what we're looking for. So basically, if we had propan 1 ol, which would be this, versus propan 2 ol, which would be CA3, CA3, like that. Well, what would we have? So in this one, the two methyl groups are equivalent to each other. So we get a six, and then you get one for that one, and you get one for that one. So it'd be a six to one to one, three peaks. Whereas here, of course, we've got two hydrogens. Here we've got two hydrogens. Here we've got three hydrogens. Uh, there's no symmetry at all to the molecule, so it would be three to two to two to one. So we get four peaks in this spectrum in a three to two to two to one ratio. Okay. Making it easy to tell them apart.